Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today is the special episode to mark the 18th birthday of Princess Amalia, the Princess of Orange of the Netherlands. Um, So I just wanted to do a special-ish episode, a bonus episode, if you will. It's going to be pretty short um, because I do still want to be um, very cognizant that she is not a working member of the Dutch royal family as of yet um, and is very much still not a child anymore, but like, um, certainly not ready for the full scope of, uh, the royal watching world. Like she hasn't graduated from school, you know, she's still very much a student and doing all of those things. Um, but I do want to commemorate this and I plan to do this for any other heirs to the throne that turn 18. Um, in time. Uh, so there should be another one in January. Um, and then a break for a little bit. Um, and I missed princess Elizabeth's cause I hadn't started podcasting yet. Um, but I just wanted to do like a brief background, um, and then share some of the events and things that went along with Amalia's 18th birthday. Like I said, this will be a fairly short episode, like 15 minutes or less. Um, but I just wanted to hop on here and do that. Um, so on December 7th, 2003, uh, Princess Amalia was born. So her full name, um, because it is not Amalia, it is Katerina Amalia Beatrix Carmen Victoria. Um, she has solely gone by Amalia literally her whole life, um, but she has a fancy hyphenated name like her dad does, um, which I kind of love. And then she is named, uh, her second and well, yeah, her second and third names are both of her grandmothers. Um, and then Victoria is actually for Crown Princess Victoria, who is one of her godparents. Um, so that is lovely. Um, she was baptized into the Dutch, uh, Lutheran church at six months old. And so her godparents, aside from Crown Princess Victoria, included two of her uncles. So Prince Constantine, who is King Willem Alexander's brother, and Martin uh, Martin Zorgeta, who is Queen Maxima's brother. So that was very lovely. Um, I wanted to just share very quickly how I became aware of this lovely child. Um, So I've kind of shared this a little bit in like some of the first episodes um that I ever did but I was a freshman in college when William and Kate got married um and before that I mean we had always been in my family like aware of the royals my family are big Diana fans. Um, and so like, I always knew of the British Royal family up until William and Kate's wedding. I did not really know there were other Royals in the world. Um, and then I learned about them from the wedding because they were all obviously there. And like, for some reason took a interest in the Swedish Royal family, specifically in Crown Princess Victoria, who had just gotten married the year before. Um, and so even though YouTube at the time was not nearly as vast as it is now, um, I was able to watch the Swedish Royal wedding. Um, and because Amalia is a godchild of Crown Princess Victoria, who is literally a godparent to almost every single Royal that exists. Um, no, it's not that intense, but she is a godparent to a lot of royals. Um, Amalia was in the wedding. And so that's how I like became aware of her. Um, and I just thought she was so cute. Cause like she was seven 
uh, maybe not even a full seven, like six at the time and just adorable. Um, so that is how I became aware of her. And, um, since I would say, of course, like 2011 have just kind of seen her grow up, uh, become the princess of orange, which is the title for the heir to the throne of the Dutch crown. Um, you know, I watched that, of course, I think live probably. Um, it's just been this really cool experience to like watch her grow up. Um, and now of course she is 18 and made her first public speech the other day. And like, you know, it's just this like, oh yeah, I love this. Love watching them age. Um, so that was lovely. So, um, with that, um, we're just going to jump into the photos. So the next category I have, I kind of like outline this out so like I can talk about it in, or, in a specific order. Um, but for Amalia's 18th birthday, I obviously knew they were going to release a series of photos, um, which they did. They released six, which I was surprised um, that they were all so similar. Um, but they released six new photos of her. Um, one of the really cute things is in, she, there's ones, um, there are three in a red dress and then three in like a black print dress. And in the red dress, she is wearing a ring, which is actually the ring that her father, King William Alexander, gave to Queen Maxima um, as like a push present. Um, so Queen Maxima got a very fancy ring for delivering each of the girls. Um, and Amalia wore the ring that King William Alexander gave to Queen Maxima for this portrait, which I just love, especially coming from knowing now that like Amalia has always had a fascination with like jewelry and loves it. Um, and can, you know, she is like all of us and can name, uh, every single crown or, or at least can visually see them and know like, oh, that goes to this royal family and that goes to this one. Um, which I just think is really fun, um, because, like, what a relatable thing, but only if you're a royal watcher is that relatable. Um, and so I just, like, love that there was, like, this piece of history plus something that she just probably loved, um, and it, of course, has sentimental attachment to her specifically, um, that I just really, really like. So that was adorable. Um, the photos are all really great. They're a little, like, um, dark and somber, but like also beautiful. Um, I just wish they were a little bit more light, but everything in due time. Um, so that was, those were given out as well as, um, the announcement of her orders. So every, um, Dutch royal, like, well, okay. Every child of the head of state. So, um, in this case, every single child of King William Alexander's will receive a, the Order of the Dutch Lion on their 18th birthday. So she received that. Um, so if she were ever to go to any um, gala event, she has a sash that she wears now. Um, which is crazy. Um, we'll see if there are any gala events. It is not expected, anticipated that she will take part in Prince's Day next year, which is, um, when King William Alexander, it's like the opening of Parliament for the Netherlands. Um, so she is maybe going to attend that. I, I think it depends one on her schooling, but also like just a number of factors. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't, but I wouldn't be surprised if she did. Like I could go 50, 50 either way on it right now. Um, so that is very exciting. Um, she also received the order of, um, let me make sure I get the, the title right. Um, the, she received a Knight of the order of the golden lion of Nassau, um, which is a shared order between the Dutch royal family and the royal family from Luxembourg. Um, so Nassau is the family name for the Netherlands and for Luxembourg. Um, 
the Dutch Royals are Orange Nassau, and I don't know what the Luxembourg Royals are other than Nassau, um, but that is, like, their family name, um, and so she received that order as well, and again, that is, um, if she were to ever go to Luxembourg before she, I don't know, um, this is the order she would wear in Luxembourg, which is probably the highest order they have, but like not the highest level in the order. Um, so that was really cool as well. Uh, her royal standard was also revealed. So I think um, for the most part, all of the girls' royal standards are going to look relatively similar, but I'm not sure if the other two, I think they do. Um, but these will be used for transportation, so if they ever, um, like, when Amalia goes to official events in a car on her own, her standard will be flown. Um, it, when she arrived to the Council of State, she arrived in her, in the same car as her parents. Um, so she, um, didn't have a, st her standard, it was her, it was the King's standard, of course. Um, but, like, this is pretty common practice. Um, you know, there's always, like, the Queen's standard on a car in England, um, same thing in Spain, um, anytime King Felipe or the Princess of Astorias are in a car by themselves, they have a royal standard flying. Fun fact, though, Queen Letizia does not have her own royal standard, so when she goes, there's just nothing there. Um, she's in the normal licensed car, which I think is funny, um, and also a little sad, but anytime, like... King Felipe is in a car. He has a royal standard. Same thing on their flights, etc. Um, so that will be flown anytime um, that she is on her own. It'll also be flown in her future residence, whatever that may be. Um, obviously, I don't expect her to move out anytime soon. Um, and even if, I mean, she's going to go to a university, but I doubt her royal standard will be flown at her university. Um, it just means her like official residence when the time comes. So that was um, the things, those were the things that came out on her birthday um, specifically, which was December 7th. And then we get to December 8th, which was her official um, entry into the Council of State. Um, so this is something that like every country has, um, that in the Netherlands, it's a very much, uh, listening and learning kind of place. They, the Royals do not have a vote. Um, King Willem Alexander is the chair of the council of state as King. Um, and then there is a vice president and then there are voting members. Um, and these are the people who, you know, they, mostly they talk about, um, ongoing events in the country. And, um, so she will be able to attend those meetings. Um, it, she won't go regularly until her studies are done. Um, but then I do think that'll be a big place for her to go, um, and really start learning. So she mentioned in her speech, which we'll talk about in just a full second. Um, but in her speech, she mentioned, um, well, she quoted her grandmother, um, Princess Beatrix, who was also queen, um, who made a statement like that, like, she was this council student. Like, she was there to learn from them about, like, ongoing things in the Netherlands. So Amalia, I think, will probably take that approach as well, just based on everything we kind of know on background. Um, and then just like what she has said herself, will be very much willing to learn that way. Um, so Amalia was accompanied by her parents to the Council of State meeting. That was an extra, uh, extraordinary Council of State meeting, um, for this specific event. Um, her father opened the um, meeting and then handed over the floor to Amalia, which was, um, fantastic. Um, I literally could cry thinking about this speech. Um, she, so I have talked about this a little bit, but like I, um, definitely did not think she was like there. Um, 
I didn't think she was going to be as prepared as she was. Um, and that goes into reasons of, you know, just the way, and this is not a critique by any stretch. Please don't mistake it as such. Um, she is just being raised and, um, brought into the public light very differently than we have seen from Belgium, Spain, Norway, um, Sweden, even like Estelle has done so much, even though she's so little, well, she's not that little anymore, but she was at one point very little, um, and like doing events. Um, and we just like, haven't really seen that from Amaya and it, it's not a critique clearly because it seemed to work. Um, but it was su surprising to me. Um, so she did a fantastic job and like is very relatable. Um, you could tell, of course, she was nervous because that was the first time she had ever done something like this, but like she handled it like a pro. Um, so she gave a speech that was amazing. Um, it's actually pretty short, but she, um, there's this paragraph here where she says, in order to fulfill my task and to work for the kingdom, I will have much to learn. I realize how little I know about the task, tasks of the government, the assessment of laws, the functioning of the administration, and the function of the judge. Um, and then she talks about how her king, or how her father, the king, and her grandmother have um, learned from the council, and how that will um, be why she is um, going to attend meetings regularly after completing her studies. So she even talks about it in her speech. Um, and then she said. Um, she gave a quote from her grandmother that I kind of paraphrased, um, but the quote is, For a very long time, members of the Council of State, I will regard myself as your student. I will try, conscious of my responsibility, to be a good student. Um, so I, again, just think that was fantastic. Um, it was very short, but it was, like, very well done, um, which I was... <laughs> thoroughly shocked by. Um, but like pleasantly, I think she just did amazing in a way that I didn't expect. Um, and then, um, afterwards she planted a tree. However, this is very confusing because it was a very large tree that had already been planted. So she just like continued filling in the dirt. Um, it was just a very large tree. <laughs> um, like, I think it was a couple years old at this point already. And it wasn't planted, like, as a baby. It was planted recently to mark this, but it was just a well-grown tree. Um, so then I think after the tree planting, they went in and did a press conference. I'm not entirely sure of, like, the chain of events. I watched it live, so I assume that this is when the the press conference piece took place, um, but she was given a chance to talk and, um, give a little bit more insight into her as a person, um, which I think was lovely. Um, you know, someone asked her about, like, her goals and dreams from her education because she doesn't, she doesn't get to choose what she's going to do, right? And this is the, the sad part of royalty, um, and the hard part, and certainly why royalty is not, um, all the glamour that it is cut out to be, um, but she talked about her goals of finding friendship that are lifelong friends and, um, learning a lot of different things that she can apply to her future job, um, and then she talked about how, there is no school, there is no programming to learn how to become a queen because, again, it's a very um, weird, strange role that there is no teaching for. Like, it's not a politician. Uh, it's similar, but it's not. Um, so what do, you, what do you focus on to learn how to be a good queen? Um, and so she talked about that. Um, and she was just very composed and, like, I don't know why I expected any different, in all honesty, but, like, she just did really, really well. Um, I think just because we hadn't seen her um, too much, like, it was a 
amazing. Um, so anyway, that was Amalia's 18th birthday. Um, it was just wonderful to see. And I watched, like I said, I watched most of it live and then have watched things back with translations because I don't speak Dutch. Um, but you can always tell emotion from watching things. Like, no matter where you are, you can figure out what the emotion is. Um, and so that was just lovely in and of itself. So anyway, that is the special episode. Um, I will be back tomorrow with another special episode focused on the Nobel Prizes, um, which I'm getting ready to catch up on now. So with that, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Bye.